Thanks for checking out my video. If you want to learn more from me, I have a lot of classes on Udemy. You can find the links to a lot of those in the description. Hey everybody. So I was doing another perusal through Reddit and I came across an interesting topic. So I thought I'd give my, uh, you know, my two cents on it. But this one, as you can tell from the title, is about how sobriety can affect your magic. Now, you know, as far as this kind of stuff goes, not, you know, this is really up to you with your own personal choices, your own personal struggles and thing and things like that. And as someone who is a recovered alcoholic, I would definitely err on the side of sobriety with these things. Although I am definitely still working on dealing with nicotine. Just throw that out there. But when it comes to sobriety, can it benefit your magic? I would argue yes. Now, you might, you know, be thinking and thinking about stuff like, you know, I've done stuff with the Hypnotoad or a cup or any other of those things. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I've actually had successful rituals and spells and things like that. So I disagree with your whole sobriety thing. Here's the thing. What I'm talking about with sobriety means the whole addiction kind of deal. Like back when I was drinking every single day for several years on end. Do you think that my magic was more effective back then or more effective now? I would argue that my magic is more effective now. And why? I mean, there's several different factors to it. One, you got to think about what. Well, so you got to think about the psychological side of things and you got to think about the energetic side of things and even the physical side of things. So let's see if I can remember all three of those. So we'll start off with the physical stuff. So we are energetic beings, right? Everything that we do, everything that we think, all of that stuff is a result of energy that we use and then we translate and direct it through our magic towards our intent. So when you are sober, for lack of a better term, and I think you guys are under understanding this, the idea is that your body's energy and your body's systems and everything work the way that they're supposed to. They don't have any other external or outside influence that is manipulating the way that the body's chemistry works. Like, you know, for the example of nicotine, nicotine is a, it reacts to the same um, dopamine, to the same receptors as dopamine, right? Therefore, you can actually mess up your brain's production of dopamine because if you get enough nicotine, your, your body's like, hey, I'm adapting. I don't really need to make nic dopamine anymore, do I? So I'm going to stop wasting my energy on that stuff, you know? So with, even with alcohol or other things, it manipulates the way that your body does what it's supposed to do. That's why you develop, you know, um, what's the word? Like you adapt to it and then you grow a tolerance and then you end up needing more and more and then it becomes habitual and, and stuff and your body needs it. And even if your mind needs it, then it can become more and more difficult to function normally, both in a regular upwork home TV bed kind of capacity and in a magical capacity. Because we want our bodies to be working and functioning as optimally as possible. That's why it's even, you know, important to do things like get, eat enough good food, exercise, sleep, all that stuff. And to make sure that your body systems and your body's energy are working optimally in order to execute a ritual with a lot of discipline and focus. And I think I'm going to make another video on that. I have that on my list. And being able to manipulate the energies that you need in order to, you know, align them with the outcome of your spell, be it positive or negative energy or a happy energy or a painful energy or what have you. If you are under the influence of something and you might be distracted or craving or what, or what have you, then you're not going to be able to have that focus to raise that proper amount of energy. You might even be able to like hypothetically focus and kind of like get there. But I guarantee you that the clarity that you get with sobriety, um, as opposed to the clear, the lack of clarity that you have when you are addicted to a substance and it's messing with your internal systems, 
in, in you know, in my case, alcohol and stuff. Um, there's, there is so much more of a clarity to sobriety that allows you to really focus in on what you need to and manipulate your emotions and focus on your intention and desire what you want. I mean, even one of the commenters on Reddit was saying that, you know, when, when it came to executing and doing rituals or even planning things out, they had a hard time doing it just because of their bad habit with alcohol. So, you know, you would feel too hungover to do a spell or you would feel too, you know, too low energy or you would rather go and drink than do some kind of spell work in order to fix your issues. So... I was trying to think about those three. Man, I should have taken notes for this one because this could be a really long one. But let me know if you guys are getting what I'm talking about so far. So we talked about the, the physiological stuff, right? The psychological stuff, we kind of leaned in on that a little bit. The idea that if you are addicted to something and you are trying to change your life for the better, the thing you need to change is right in front of you. And the thing you need to change is kind of like that first speed bump in the way before those other speed bumps. Addictions can be all encompassing because when we're addicted to something, it affects literally every single aspect of our lives, you know, because we need that thing in order to function in our everyday life. Therefore, it affects every single part of it. And a lot of times, like I love this phrase I just heard in a movie, first we do what's in front of us and then we do the next thing, right? So that thing in front of you is your addiction rather than the fact that you have like, you know, difficulty or you want to find a better, like a better relationship or you want to get into a relationship or you want a, a new job or a better job or you want to eliminate somebody out of your life or whatever. You know, you're talking about all these negative things that you want to change. Sometimes change starts within us and it requires doing something like giving up the things that we are doing to ourselves that are harmful, you know. So sometimes we complain about all the different things and all the different ways that other people are negatively affecting our lives, but we don't understand that we're doing that to ourselves. So we got to handle those kinds of things first. So with any addiction, you have the mess up with your energetic system, the inability to to focus your physicality can be affected to where you are not able to even get into your ritual chamber or you know set up your altar or even plan your ritual maybe your focus is that bad because you know i've been i've been through a lot with alcohol particularly and i can tell you all the ups and downs that i went through when it came to doing magic and stuff like i would step into my i would step into my room to do some magic and things like that because I would practice and I would literally only practice when I was buzzed. So if that's the case, do you think any of my magic was actually effective? Or, you know, wouldn't it have been better to do that sober? Right? Um, it's just <laughs> the the answer with that kind of stuff just seems so obvious to me. You know, where anything that we do, like, you know, driving a car, Sober is way better than driving it on something because you're going to get to your destination more safely, more focused, yada, yada. And magic can be the, can be the same way. Your ability to manipulate emotions is going to get better when it comes to raising the energy in, rich, in ritual. Your energetics and your intentions that you're sending out to work with other spirits or saying, hey, I'm going to be able to, this is what I want and I'm going to need your help and I'm going to do this exchange of energy. Well, your, your energy is crap at that moment, you know, even the, after the spell work stuff, where I always talk about, you have to go out and do real world, real world action in order for it to manifest in the real world, whatever the desire is that you want. If you are focused on the addiction thing, and if you have an addiction, you are at least subconsciously focused on it, or you might structure your day around it, that, that kind of stuff. When you do a spell to create something new, you are telling the universe, you do this part for me, I'm going to do this too. You know, it requires change and stuff. Magic doesn't always just, hey, I want to make this happen. And the next day it happens without any of your input, you know. So you say, 
hey, universe, I'll meet you halfway if I do this and you do that. But then your addiction and maybe you're too hungover or maybe you're too busy going out to bars or whatever or coming home and waiting until 7 o'clock to pour your first shot of vodka. You know, are you putting your energy towards that goal? No. Even if you did, is it like, you know, half-hearted? Yeah. Is it the same amount of energy or effort that you could have put in? Probably not. I would argue definitely not. The There are so many different effects that, you know, sobriety can have on magic where you get this mental clarity of being able to make your own decisions and your energy levels go up. Your ability to focus goes up. Your ability to plan things goes up. And you can use all of those things in a more constructive way when after you step out of a ritual and you go out into the real world and you're like, look at this. I conquered this addiction I had. I made that huge change and then I just did this ritual for X, Y, Z, whatever. I can do that too. So even conquering an, an, any addiction is a huge boost of confidence when it comes to creating your reality because you created the reality of sobriety for yourself you overcame a huge a huge hurdle you know you could you could call it whatever you want the monkey on your back whatnot um <laughs> thinking dark tower references and when you think of things in that way you're proving to the universe hey i set my mind to something i can do it so then, what's the next thing you want to set your mind to, and what's the next thing that you want to do about it? Because once you conquer any type of addiction, that can really show the universe and show you that whatever you can, or what, whatever you want to do, you can do. All right, done ranting. My foot wasn't even on the soapbox this time. Anyways... Let me know what you guys think about this one. Let me know what your stories or struggles with these kinds of things down in the comments. If you check any of a lot of my other videos, I do mention about my own struggles with addiction and stuff like that. And just, just know that there are other people out there that are dealing with the same kind of thing. And you can do it. All right. Anyways, enough of the pep talk. I'm going to get going. But until next time, good hunting.